the Vision Board Podcast, hosted by Johnny Stofko and Tristan Cannell. Welcome back, everybody. Episode three of the Vision Board Podcast. I'm Tristan Cannell. Alongside me, I've got a special guest, and as always, I've got Johnny Stofko. Johnny. What's up, guys? How's it going? Very excited today. So, just to give you a little bit of a teaser, we've got a New Zealand Commonwealth Games representative. He's on his path to the Olympic Games. 2013, he finished ninth. And at the currently 48th ranked in the world. In the world. We're very, very excited to have this man on. But for this... How many people are in the world? Seven know, eight billion? I don't know, man. So he's 48th, yeah. man. This guy's, this guy's yeah. got game. He's a bad dude. Wow, man. <laughs> before that, but let's thank our awesome sponsors. Yeah, so uh, sponsoring this episode of the Vision Board Podcast, we have The Organic Trainer. You can check them out at www.theorganictrainer.com. And what this company is, it's based, it's a tea company. And they're targeting the healthy, well-being, fitness lifestyle. They have a couple products. They have a couple exercise teas, um, a lemon sage uh, tea, as, as well as a hibiscus flavored tea. Also, there is a sleep recovery tea that I'm a big fan of. It's a chamomile tea. If you're interested, check this uh, company out. They also have a water bottle. It's a flask that you put the tea in. It's very, uh, let's say, efficient, so you can just carry it with you as well. Our second sponsor, Jackrabbit Slim's Barbershop. Now, if you're living in the Sydney area, specifically King's Cross or Potts Point, stop by Jackrabbit Slim's and give Dre a call. Definitely book in. Um, always busy, definitely doing the best skin fades and getting you ready for that big night out. Hell yeah. Yeah, let's rock I think roll. I might book him in this weekend, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm missing I know it. yours is looking pretty tight, so. Does he handle beards too? He does handle <laughs> beards. <laughs> a little special guest just trying <laughs> to get in a little yeah. bit earlier. Sorry, I'll give him sorry. his name. <laughs> too keen, too keen. Yeah. Without it, further ado, Johnny, who we got on this? Yeah, tonight we got uh, Ivica Pavlinic. Ivica, the man Pavlinic. I just made that nickname up. <laughs> um, Croatian-born Kiwi, is that right? Yeah, that's right. How you doing, man? I'm very good. Yeah, thanks for... Inviting me on. Yeah, no worries, man. Thanks yeah. for being here. Awesome. Tell us about your background, man. Tell us a little about this. If you were born in Croatia. Yeah, I was born in Croatia. Then the um, parents dragged me over to New Zealand. Uh, started doing judo. Um, started wrestling other men in pajamas. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, judo sort of started being a big part of my life pretty early on. From about seven, I started and started getting serious at fourteen. And yeah, I did uni in New Zealand, and yeah, after when I finished uni, I started competing a lot more internationally and training overseas a lot, and yeah. Awesome, man. Who got you into judo? Was your dad or? No, it was my bigger brother. Big brother? Yeah, you know Tim. my big brother. Shout yeah. out. Yeah, Tim Pavlinich. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Currently in, where's he at? Croatia right now. I uh, know, he's in Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. some of the photos you posted. Yeah, yeah, he's in Switzerland on holiday. But yeah, he got me into judo, and now I beat him up, so it's... Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's going to be my next question. Have the boys, have the brothers rumbled? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we... Actually, like, uh, now it's... Now I'm a bit better, but, you know, he's not bad. He's mm. not bad. He's a good training partner. Yeah. And uh, it's always good when he jumps on the mat and has a rumble. But actually, I've been in him more times than he's beaten in me, but last time we fought, it was a while ago, I think it was like 2009, it was a team event, and if you win, you stay on and... You'd stay on and fight the next guy, and I'd had two fights in a row, and I'd won two in a row, and he came on as the third one, and he he knocked me over. So he actually Whoa. beat me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Watch out! I actually heard a story because uh, I asked. I, I know Tin a little bit, and I asked him, "Do you remember um, talking to Tin the first time that you beat him? Like, so the first time his little brother beat him, beat him, and he was telling me this story. He was he basically said the first once he lost that first time, he he knew that he was never going to be able to get you again." Oh, Which really? was an interesting, like, mental side note to say. I think you got you were, what, 16 or 17? I might yeah, be off on yeah, that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting, though. Are we sure Tim's not in Switzerland tra- training? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, on the down comes back animal, you know? <laughs> Shredded. <laughs> Doing, like, high-altitude uh, training camps. <laughs> right, with the mask? Yeah. You those? Yeah, it's crazy. No, so, but uh, it's actually a funny story. I think I was about 14, I remember... Um, Maybe even 13, and I happened to beat him once, just we were playing on the ground. Um, judo groundwork is like a lot like BJJ, but we call it Naywaza, and we're doing a bit of Naywaza, and I get him in a hold down, and he can't get out, and then we start again, and he goes, and he just 
crushes me and sprains my neck. And <laughs> that was the first time I beat him and he just crushed me and sprained my neck. How old were you? I was like 13, he would have been 17. Or so something. you won, but you really lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't know. I was, he was still a lot bigger than me then. Yeah. He's still a bit, probably yeah, think, weight wise, he's bigger wise, than me now. Think but. about that gap too from a 13 year old to a 17 year old. That is maturity, testosterone. That's yeah, a man. huge gap. N- not so much especially when you're in the yeah, 30s. Four years. Especially yeah. 10. He had puberty at like six. Whereas, yeah. I, whereas, <laughs> whereas I had to wait till like 15. You know? I was a late bloomer too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some of the boys. I happened. never grew, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting for yeah. TK. Yeah. Yeah. It'll come. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. When I'm 34, you know, I might. A little bit. You got your best I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. It's all downhill when you hit puberty. Man. I heard that. <laughs> you lose the excitement. Yeah. Where else did you go up in New Zealand? Uh, Hamilton, unfortunately. No, yeah. no Hamilton's oh, alright. <laughs> Hamilton's alright. Just yeah. got a bit of a bad rep. But um, do you get do your parents survive that? Uh, no, they're in Queensland. I'm actually going to visit them in a few weeks. Sweet. But yeah, Hamilton uh, was my high school and uni days. Like a lot of good times. Nice. And you've sat down in Sydney. How long have you been here for? I've uh, been here living with Big Brother for about, since about January. Sweet. But, uh, How are you finding it? I like it. Uh, it's a big city. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. actually a smaller, I like smaller places more, to be honest. Mm. But uh, Sydney's alright, yeah. I, this year I've been here. Yeah. yeah, lots of Kiwis. I've just met like free on the weekend yeah so coming from Hamilton your background um, in, in high school and, and as a kid was there much were there judo gyms everywhere uh, in, Hamilton, like where you're from or like how did you find competition Hamilton has three judo clubs which is alright for a city that's got 150,000 so it's not okay. not too bad I was really fortunate in the second part of your question about training partners and competition I was really fortunate to have a guy called Sean Choi he was um two years older than me and he was I think he met he's just like a natural athlete and he did judo like he's a natural athlete he played rugby for five months and made our school's first 15 and like he was third in Korea at table tennis and he picked what? judo yeah. yeah he picked judo and um he was pretty much beating me up since I was about 14 every day and um yeah, I have a lot to thank him for in terms of my development because he's just technically, he was always great and, you know, I had to step up to that mark and he constantly pushed me. So he's a, he was, a, like, pr- pretty much a big part of my development. That's awesome. They yeah. say that when you, look yeah. at, when you look at famous athletes, I'll use John Jones, for instance, the current, I mean, he got stripped of his belt, 205 champion, probably the best, best in the world. Yeah. He says, in an interview, he's not even the best in his house. He has two older brothers... Um, who are both Super Bowl champions. Yeah. And he, he attributes both of them, wow. him being a champion, because since he was a little guy, just getting beat up every yeah, single yeah. day, every single day. And there's something to that. Uh, yeah. That adversity is an eight-year-old, is a it, nine-year-old. Yeah, you know? it knocks the asshole out of you as well. You're like, I like that. <laughs> you get beat up every day. It's kind of hard to be a dick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting to see what's going to happen in Rousey's transformation because that, that's yeah. a big like main factor, being humble. I think... Yeah. Um, but honestly, I met her before. Yeah, you met her. Yeah, 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 the training camp in America. In like she was judo too. Wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. she's she a judo girl. She medaled. Yeah, she got an Olympic medal. She's a great judoka, you know. Um, the thing with her is like, she's so passionate and driven. When you see her training, she's really like. I remember I threw her, and she got like. I just saw the look in her eyes, like really upset with herself. So she's really driven, mm. and that side, and you can tell that when you see her training and stuff. But um, at the same time. I think her TV persona, because I've talked to her in real life, and she's quite friendly and nice, but her TV persona is quite different to yeah. that, I find. Maybe their managers kind of build them up a yeah. bit differently. Yeah, but at the, same time, at the same time, an American friend who used to be her training partner, she stayed in my place recently, and she's, she contradicted what I said, and she's like, oh, she's the same as in real life. But they used to beat each other up, so maybe they don't like that rivalry. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's interesting too, though, when you have an athlete, or I think I think it, the the best example would be an athlete, and it would be an undefeated athlete mm. who has never tasted defeat. They have to start. You have all the media, yeah. you have all the interviewers telling you you're the best in the world, and yeah, then you start. You, you, it starts. You, it would probably be yeah. tough to compartmentalize. It who starts you really getting are. into the head. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what happened to her. Yeah. Well, I think she'll come back stronger. Yeah, I, I think losses are the time. That's man. what they say. That's I what they say. Them. I was there. We were there. I was there in Melbourne for that fight, and to witness, I think it was really. 
it was really interesting to see a champion at that level. We talked about this uh, a couple nights ago. Not only lose, but how she was so dominant in every other fight and then just get totally dominated. Yeah, she just, That's what I was shocked she at. She just couldn't, um, couldn't deal with the range as well. Her range is all she was trying to rush. But That's right. She looked like she panicked distance. after getting yeah. hit right, right in the beginning. Yeah. And then had no game plan. Yeah, yeah, no backup plan. Though. Yeah, but you know she's a great athlete, and I, I think she'll come back cool, stronger. Man. I hope that's her size. Is she small? Well, uh, says she's five seven. Yeah, but she I was at one thirty five. When I met her, I was uh, I was only sixty six kilos. I competed okay. under sixty six. Was she now hot? I compete, hey, Did you, you think she was hot, or was she kind of like a boy boy girl? Uh, no, I th- like a tomboy. <laughs> I thought she was hot until I saw her ears. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, she's got worse colleagues. Well, they call me like, oh, what are you sharing worse colleagues. If you guys are just listening to the audio and not checking our YouTube channel off for the video, uh, Vita has the coolest <laughs> cauliflower oh, ears. Yeah, yeah, I wish I had. I think I might get a surgery to get the ear. Even, yeah. I'm messing with you, man. One side, one right side, side dominant. Right side's on an Audi. And <laughs> left he's quite a big build, too, yeah. so he's either a rugby player or a fighter. Oh, he's so a savage. You're not, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. not messing with Vita. Yeah, yeah. Vita is the guy that you're seeing at the club, and you're like, he, you know, there's like a primordial, like, this is on your him. girlfriend? Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. You can have it. Yeah, you can have it. it. It doesn't go like that. It just means that no girls talk to me. <laughs> like, uh, I'm talking to mates, and they're like, oh, yeah, some, some pretty girls came up and talked to me, and I'm like, this never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Am I scary looking? <laughs> no, you, you do have a couple different sides. We had lunch last week, and it, you know you didn't have the hat on, and then you see somebody wearing a hat, and I could see how that um, there would be an intimidation factor because that you know you close the eyes off, you have the build already, and then the walk, and you put the hat on. You, you know, it's yeah. interesting though what what how we feel Should've... personally, how we feel about ourselves, yeah. and then what we project out. This so, is... I was talking about this this morning. It's probably why I never get upgraded to first class on planes and stuff. I've never had. A, I fly around like a champion all the time. Yeah. But I've never been upgraded. Maybe it's because I look like this. Uh, no, no. I look like a thug. No, Honest, it's discrimination. <laughs> upgrade my man. Yeah, come yeah. on, Honest, you're better than that, man. When you, yeah. I'll even buy a lo- I'll even get a Qantas loyalty card if you upgrade me just once. Yeah, just once, man. That's good. You got to shout out to stuff. Qantas there. I flew first class once. I got upgraded. Did from, you? Yeah, flying from LA to Sydney. What were you wearing? I, oh, dude, I would get yelled at for that because my girlfriend was a flight attendant, oh, so yeah. we I would fly standby. And I guess if you're flying standby for you United, gotta, you, you have to dress up. I have I have like Nike joggers on, <laughs> flip flops, a hat, and I remember Stop it's, easy. yeah, looking awful, like zero. Uh, I wear my yeah. thongs everywhere too. That's probably yeah. why I've never got an upgrade. Yeah, I'm terrible like taking bum. directions, man. Yeah, I might just uh, buy a suit just for Do flying. It. Yeah. <laughs> then you'd look like uh, the man, the X Men. The the Ozzy. That's who he looks like. The oh, are you Jack? Yeah, yeah. 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 Jack a little bit of Jackman in him. Yeah. Hell yeah. I don't sing as well, though. Really? Is he good? I saw him. He's, he's in all these musicals. I don't know. Yeah, like, so he, yeah, so he's he classically trained. He does trained. a lot, man. Yeah. Mm. yeah all these, to be an actor trained. in Hollywood, you, you can't just have the face. There has to be some type of... More than of, one trick pony. There has yeah, to be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even like... Oh, he's a great he's actor. Wolverine, but he's, yeah. Wolverine. He's, he's a great actor. If you've seen a prestige, yeah. like, he's a great he's actor. He's a great actor. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. When he's Wolverine, he probably could take bits off. Yeah, yeah. He trains his ass off. Yeah, he does. He's big, yeah. man. He's, uh, I've seen, I've seen one of his, man. um, sorry, I've seen one of his memes and it's like, if the bar ain't bending, you're pretending. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Fair enough. Right I like that. What, yeah. what is that again? Say that? If the bar ain't bending, you're pretending. That's nice. I yeah. like that. I'm going to put that one in my back pocket. I've never heard that one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Put it into your playbook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. The playbook. Yeah. Did you play footy, uh, rugby growing up? Uh, oh, just a little bit as a kid, but, um, when I was quite young, I, pl- I love rugby. Like, Who's your team, man? Apart from the All Blacks, obviously. I'm yeah, sure. but I like uh, the Chiefs. Chiefs. Hamilton. And, Sonny Bill uh, fan? Or? I, I like Sonny, yeah. I, I man like crush? Sonny. Bit of a man crush yeah, Not a man crush, that's a bit strong. I no, got a man crush for uh, Richie McCaw. Yeah? Man crush, yeah. But I like the same years, um, don't you? Huh? You got the same years. Yeah, yeah. Wait, well, well, so, you, so you, get the, you get the ears from rugby too? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you get yeah. stomped oh, on. Yeah. You get stomped on. I didn't know that. Yeah. But, um... Well, I actually, I like the Chiefs, the Hurricanes, and I like the Highlanders. Like last season, the Highlanders were champs. And yeah, that was really awesome. Really good in the final too. Yeah, and that was awesome because um, they're such passionate rugby fans, yeah. but they never won a Super Rugby competition. It so, is. But yeah. did you play from a, like a small when you were at school? Did then like I, finals it forced on you sort of? Yeah, to play yeah. Or? I just I just played because my mates played, but then in '98. Uh, 
I stopped playing rugby and went to soccer. Oh, no, no, 98. Whoa. Soccer. I played soccer as a kid because uh, Croatia came third in the World Cup in 98. And I remember getting up, it was France 98, getting up watching as a kid. Like, and, uh, Who'd you go for when Australia played Croatia? Uh, Croatia. <laughs> I'm a Kiwi. I'm not an Aussie. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, that's it. So talk a little bit about, um, I was reading, you ranked in New Zealand and you ranked in Australia? Uh, in terms of, is, am I, yeah, did uh, I read that wrong? Yeah, no, I uh, competed in Australian National Championships this year. I did it just kind of as a training competition, but I ended up taking the gold medal. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah you know, I just mess... Aussies can't touch you. Yeah, it's kind of like Ice uh-huh. Cube. I just messed around and in got a fairness, triple double. In fairness, the Aussie, current Aussie number one in my weight category, he's, he has beaten me before, so he's not... He's, he's a good athlete. Yeah. He's a good level. But you, you fought at 81 kilos. Yeah. You don't look at 81 kilos. What do you how, how much do I look? You look about 90 kilos. Um, I was so 88. I'm 85 yeah. right now. Okay. So, so yeah. obviously you're walking weight. No, I mean like, walking what's, what's the cut process down when you go in competition? Oh, there's uh, about two weeks, two weeks of um, patient and uh, discipline. Two okay. weeks of uh, low carb diet. Yeah. And then the last, I'll shred off about two, three kilos like that. And then it'll last... Couple of days is just water weight. Yeah. What's the hardest part of the cut? If you were to take the cut, the last kilo. Okay, so so <laughs> it's it, always the last kilo. Now is you. that is that getting really specific with um, your energy expenditure, what you're doing, or is it the calorie intake, what you're eating? Like, how are you managing that? Uh, honestly, I try and make it a short. So it's a short drop. Okay. Short drop, nice and fast. You know, it's, uh, if I've got two kilos left, you know, last couple of days I don't eat much. Just, just so you know, I don't weigh in with a full stomach. You know, yeah. I want to in, weigh in empty, and then have a have food afterwards. But like the last kilos, you know, a few hours before weigh in, I'll go to a sauna, just get it off, get it and off. then just wait. You know, yeah. it's, um, when is the weigh in? The day before. Day before, and then I have to rehydrate, which isn't too bad. Rehydrate and eat and chill out, go to sleep. Do they let you use like food. IVs and stuff like that? Is that? Uh, is it a side? I don't use a. I don't use an IV, but I think some guys. Do. They yeah. just banned that in MMA. Yeah, they did. I yeah, they, so you're well. no longer allowed to use the IV for the cut. So honestly, pre- I've never needed it, so I don't. I was going to ask you that. What are you now? 26, 27? 27. 27. Are you seeing that? So we're drilling a new house, by the way. If you guys hear that in the background, <laughs> we're actually filming this on site of a construction zone. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, so. Um, my question was, as you're getting, you're, you're 27 now, are you finding the cut getting more difficult? Or is it nothing, or is it something that you've never really struggled with, you're uh, not really dropping too many kilos? I'll tell you what, I'm less, I'm less annoyed, like when I was 17 and, or 18 and cutting, you couldn't hang around with me, I was a complete asshole. Yeah. But now, now I'm pretty chill, that, you know, you guys have met me now, and I'm pretty chill, and it just like... Do you think I that just, comes with like ex- patience and experience? Yeah, patience. Yeah. I mean, just mm-hmm. I just you know cut the weight. You know, try not. Yeah, just I just manage it and just chill out in front of the TV or something, or just keep myself busy and I don't get too annoyed. I yeah. don't I don't go watch the cooking channel or anything like that because that that would be a bad idea. You know, yeah. constantly watching food or. But yeah, that's how I pretty much. It's gotten. It's gotten harder depending on how much I weigh. If I'm 87, 88, 90 kilos, sometimes I get up to 90 kilos. Mm-hmm. And then, then obviously, it's going to be a mission. Okay. But, um, yeah, how often are you spent? So when you get in the sauna, you mentioned, are, now, is that part of your, your routine um, throughout the year? Or are you using that specifically as a tool to cut weight? I'm using it specifically when I need to. Okay. Like, to the dry sauna, weight. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just to get... Just to get yeah, the weight off. Water sort of thing. I do. Um, I do normally once a week just sauna as a recovery thing. Yeah. Yeah. Have you? Did you hear? Did you um, check into uh, or heard about Dr. Rhonda Patrick? Yeah. Yeah. You sent me the link. Yeah. yeah did, um, did you get to watch that? Yeah. Or I, I, I was, was going to ask you it. some it was, um, feedback on what you yeah, thought about it was, that. Yeah. Uh, I talked to my strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. Um, and he's. I was like, "What day can I fit in a few more sauna sessions just to, just to see what he says?" And. Uh, He's like, yeah, do them, do them after training some days, and cool man. Yeah, so I, I think I'll I'll give it a go. If, if it increases protein synthesis, um, yeah. If it's got that much of an effect on protein protein synthesis, I, I don't think it's going to be bad for you. I think it's going to be improved. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to 
I've never seen those figures before. That's so. right. She said she mentioned and she phrased a term called heat shock proteins. If you yeah. listeners are listening to this and aren't familiar, YouTube Dr. Rhonda Patrick. She's uh, an excellent source. She is a PhD in nutrition and she dubs so after a specific hardcore strength session or um, say if I hit the heavy bag or if I'm boxing for about an hour and I want to get maximum recovery and protein synthesis, expose yourself to extreme dry heat and she dubs it hypothermic conditioning. Mm. Pretty fascinating stuff. She was actually on Joe Rogan's podcast. Yes. She was on, also on Joe DeFranco's podcast DeFranco's, as well. yeah, who runs with the <coughs> Onion Academy down yeah. in Austin, which is an awesome... Yeah, so yeah if you're in America and Texas podcast, area, stop, yeah. the, stop there. It's, Stop there before it's a great spot. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, I've actually got a sauna in my building, so I'm gonna try it out. That's awesome. Amazing, yeah, good. So, how's your training at the moment? Like, how many days are you training in the week? Uh, well, okay, we'll tell you last week. I, I had the weekend off because last week was my first training back after two weeks yep. holidays, essentially holiday. Yeah, and I was doing uh, Monday to Friday, I did two a days, so two trainings like a strength and conditioning and a judo session. Mm -hmm. And on, yeah, so I did 10 trainings last week. Wow. Probably, yeah. So by Saturday, you were feeling pretty, pretty yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and I was, I needed a rest weekend and I had one. <laughs> yeah. So um, how old were you when you had that, when you woke up and said, I want to be a judo Olympian? I was quite young. Like, was that 12. because of your brother? Or was that because of, who, who is like, when you were 12, who is my Michael Jordan in judo? There's, uh, there's a few Kiwis who went to the 2000 Olympics. And that was Sydney, right? Yeah, that was Sydney. And, um, was Lombard there? Uh, he was, uh, I think he fought. Did he fight for Cuba then? So, yeah. Yeah, he, he would have fought for Cuba uh, still. Yeah. Interesting. But I think he repped. There's something. We're talking about Hector Lombard. Yeah. He had a pretty lucrative judo career. Was he, would you say he was... He was, was he fighting one? here in Sydney for a while too. Yeah, okay. yeah he was yeah. based in Sydney for a while. <laughs> okay. Um, Apparently he was a bit crazy, according to all Yeah, no, he's gnarly. Well, he made the UFC too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the UFC. He's got a, he's got a ban right there. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. did the year ban for um, some some sort of of some last episode, Mexican supplements. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> they're all Mexican. Well, in, Amer yeah. in America, you go down to TJ, Tijuana, and they sell yeah. you anything. That's what. Okay. Same thing. <laughs> Banned that. substances. Asada would not give him the go ahead to fight. <laughs> oh, Asada. Yeah. yeah. Who, who's the world champion at the moment, Judah? Uh, in my weight category, the world number one is uh, Tikashvili from Georgia. Georgian. And uh, but the current world champion is Nagase from Japan. Cool. So you, we've got a world rankings list like the same as in tennis. So if you're a world champion, you're not necessarily world number one. I know you're a badass when you go by one name. Yeah. The Japanese guy, what's his name? Uh, I don't know his first name. Yeah. Nagase. Yeah, Nagase. He's like he's pretty badass. Eh? Like, Have you fought him? I've trained with him. We're gonna start um, calling. You should just go by Vitz. Yeah. yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. One name. Hell yeah. <laughs> but like uh, the guy is just an animal. He fights eighty ones. He's come third in Japan open weight. Open weight. Yeah. Wow. And Gnarly. he fights eighty ones, and he's like he's at Tsukuba University, which is one of the hardest universities in Japan, and he's the main bully there. And he's eighty one kilos. He's a bully. Is this is like, like karate kid. Well, you, you need to close this guy's mouth. Like, Let's do this. In Japan and judo, you got like the kohai and senpai system so the kohai has to if you knew you were a kohai and you get you know you get the shit beat out of you and you now get clarify with us when you say university you don't mean like we're going to take biology classes you mean a judo academy essentially yes they but every every university in japan essentially has a judo club associated with it and then um you have university championships and Tsukuba University, which is his university, is one of the best. Yeah, there's, uh, when you, the difference between Japan and pretty much the rest of the world, and America is similar to Japan, you specialize in a sport and you go to university and you do your degree, but you, you play, play sport and you have a big focus yeah. on sport at the same time. And yeah. Japan's a lot like that. Do yeah. they pay, now do the regular, so if you're playing a sport in Japan, um, and, and Maybe answer this question for me in Australia as well and New Zealand. Um, say I go to the school to play a sport. Are they paying for my tuition? Uh, if you get a scholarship. In Australia and New Zealand, you have to get a scholarship. In Japan, it's like America, I think. No, Amer America, you have to get a scholarship. You yeah. 
Yeah, but they hand out a lot more scholarships, I think, than like Australia, New Zealand. They don't hand out. There's not. No, many, there's no, there's no uh, scholarships there's not, here because there's no sport, university sports here. Yeah, there's not. It's many, just all yeah. on the amateur side without, yeah, without yeah, sports. Yeah, there's where you're like, once televised. New Zealand, sort of stuff, New yeah. Zealand, and Australia uni games is like. <laughs> yeah, we all go to uni games, yeah. but it's all. You go to uni games. games. You go out and drink. That's yeah. That's you, go, you go. You go have beers <laughs> and then you go compete. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not serious. It's, yeah, it's very <laughs> unserious. I remember in Newcastle in 2003, we were ranked number one. In touch football, mixed touch football. Yeah, all of us just on the drink all the time. We didn't even make the quarterfinals. Yeah, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> my brother. That sounds my brother like four was, years of college geez. for me. Yeah, my brother was. Uh, he was a novice rower, and he went to uni games for rowing, and he just said it was a week of drinking. Yeah, <laughs> it was like schoolies, just yeah, a couple yeah. of days, a couple of years after. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's good, good times though. You enjoyed that, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's tough to combine the two. Like, <laughs> drinking and sport. We, we, were 20, we were 20 back. We, we, yeah. we had this conversation a few minutes ago outside that um, beers, you know. Yeah, what did you, what did you call I said it? it was the second best invention in the world after bacon. <laughs> <laughs> he said, though, in, in a fluent sentence, my two, basically some, I'm paraphrasing, my two favorite things are beer and bacon. I was like, oh my God, that sounds <laughs> no, amazing. So, so <laughs> if, you're, if, you're calling, if you're calling them inventions, yeah. I say the reach around is up there too. Yeah, <laughs> the reach around is. Wow. So, somebody was really thinking outside the box with the reach around. Yeah, yeah. And she, did, she or he didn't get enough credit. I think there should be maybe a stamp. <laughs> I don't, I don't think Jane. she got enough credit. Yeah, yeah, right? She, she's... That's the first time that happened. She's just going, is he really trying this? Yeah. <laughs> he's, done, he's done the yawn. And she's, <laughs> she knew what he's doing straight away. Yeah. And she just, How she's, she's, she's a good known. girl. Yeah, like, she's really, a good girl and she yeah. went with it. Yeah, she, and then, now it's just a thing. She's creative. She's his thinking outside name, the box. His last name was probably Reach Around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would probably put him in, what region would he be from in the world at that time? <laughs> Uh, that's, not, that's not. That's not. He's probably a kickbox. <laughs> so who do you want to fight in the Olympics, man? Like Sorry? anyone that in particular, top ten guy that you want to make oh, fall uh, out here yeah. right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, to be honest, uh, the way I, the way I go about competitions, I'm not too focused on who I'm fighting. I yeah. just focus on yourself yeah, a little bit. Yeah. That's awesome. You, what, what can you control in like yeah. in a sport? You can mostly you can just control yourself. Yeah. You can control your you can't actually control what your opponent's going to do. So you can you can just maximize your own performance. So I don't really focus on my Talk, opponent. I wanted to ask you a question. Talk a little bit about so you you have an upcoming fight coming up, right? Uh, so the upcoming yeah. fight, from what I've read and from what you've told me about, every fight is very important for you. Yeah. So talk a little bit about. Right before that fight starts, and you're on, and you're on the mat. What, like, could, I think about that a lot. I just, this is my mat. I say, this is my mat, and he's gonna have five minutes of hell, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna be cold, like emotionally cold, and just, just do it step by step, same as training, and just win every exchange. In judo, we call every. Yeah, a little go and exchange, and I'm just going to win every exchange and dominate every exchange. Do you even hear the crowd? Is the crowd a factor ever? Uh, no. Okay, because I sometimes, saw the... sometimes like uh, sometimes you get a big crowd and. Is it ever overwhelming? There's a competition called Paris Grand Slam, and that's pretty nuts. There's it's a big crowd. I think it's like twenty thousand or more people in the wow. crowd. Yeah. And um. It's a, it's. I wouldn't say it's a bad experience, an overwhelming experience. I think you just embrace it. Okay. Cool. Although, I'm there, although last time I fought in Paris, it didn't end well. It, I like. I was. I was fighting well. I was fighting really well. I was fighting against a Japanese guy, and he was good. And um, but I was dominating every exchange, and then the one exchange where he dominated, he threw me, and it made like it made a highlights reel, and like. Honestly, I, 10 minutes after the fight, I just happened to go on Facebook. I'm lying there, a bit disappointed still. I go on Facebook. You know, I've just lost first round. Yeah. I go on Facebook and it's got 100,000 views already. Like, <laughs> just, wow. And I was just thinking, oh, oh, this is going to go viral. And it did go viral. <laughs> you know, like, I think it's about a million views. The so. toss? The toss? Yeah, yeah. It's, awesome. it's, it's interesting how moments, I, I know we touched base uh, last week on this, but so that same moment that you, yeah. you remember, I think it's really important, the opposite spectrum of the moment, like when you beat the gentleman from 
um, it's a, it's a YouTube video I watched. Yeah, you, the it, American boy. Yeah, yeah. You, in that emotion too, though. Yeah, that was well. I said um, that day in Rio when I came and finished ninth, top sixteen. Yeah, that day in Rio was my goal leading up to it was like, oh yeah, top sixteen finish, and you know that moment when I got the where I threw him and I got the result. It's just like. You know, when you've set a tough goal for yourself and you've made it, and that was just an exuberating feeling, right? Mm-hmm. I think uh, one of the things is maybe I shouldn't say this on a podcast. Say it. Oh, dude, there's the no only, rules. The only uh, better feeling than sex is winning. I'd I say. like that. Yeah, that's a good. Um, that's a good quote. Yeah, it's it's really it's really true. You know, when you yeah, when you dude, that's what I'm not just winning in competition, but winning in general, just like yeah, yeah, achievement. winning at life. It's yeah, yeah, achievement. Achievement's a good feeling. Yeah, we were chatting before about um, everything. You know, I read a lot, and it's really interesting to read guys who are really successful, who have built things from nothing and have created an incredible product or an incredible vision that many people could use. And they always say the thing that got them there was putting themselves in uncomfortable positions, being in a scenario where you can't retreat. And it had me thinking of you because you have you. That's what your sport is. That's what any fighter is constantly being in these positions of being uncomfortable and I think that is a very important skill trait behavior that a lot of us as humans we we never get to to yeah. to see because Sometimes we choose because they yeah. choose to be comfortable and they never grow yeah. so I think that's a beautiful part of sport too yeah but it's interesting definitely, um, definitely when you have a fighting sport you know sock is a hard sport Basketball's a hard sport. Tennis is potentially even harder because you're out there on your own. Mm. But in soccer and tennis and basketball, they're all beautiful sports. I love all sport. But, you know, no one's trying to beat you up, you know? Your yeah. life's not on the line. Your life's not on the line. Yeah, yeah, you're not... No one's trying to better you. Yeah. yeah. You're literally putting your life at risk when you put the gi on. Because, essentially, yeah. Say, yeah. say one day you wake up and, you know, you're still Vitsa Pavlinich... But for some reason, it's like in Space Jam. I don't know if you guys ever watched that movie. All those star athletes had their bodies, but they didn't. They were like, you know, the, the equivalent to like a five-year-old. They didn't know how to use their bodies. What yeah. if that happened on the mat? Mm-hmm. And, and think about dangerous. That's then you get to see the well, dangers yeah, of the, the wrong sport. position or anything. Yeah. That's a great right. movie, Space Jam. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should kill. I know Michael Jordan. Oh come on! Is that, is that the Michael, yeah, Michael, Michael Jordan? Jordan. Come yeah. on, MJ, man. Sorry. Yeah, R. <laughs> Kelly sang the song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's R- a great Ke- song. Yeah, great like, song. I do like that song, man. We should yeah. have a little intro. I'll start singing it. Like R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> What's the road to the Olympics now? Do you have to? How do you get qualified? Okay, so there's two things I got to fulfill. I got to beat some uh, New Zealand Olympic cri- uh, New Zealand Olympic Committee criteria is I have to beat someone top 32 in the world. Cool. Yep. And um, they'll just like. That'll come with the next few competitions, I guess. Yeah. Just if my preparation, everything goes well, you know, it's not it's not easy to be someone top thirty two no, in the world. Top thirty two in, in the, the world. world. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the New Zealand Olympic Committee standard. The International Judo Federation standard is top twenty two in the world, and that's one per country. And so, um, you know, in my category, Russia is really dominant, and I think they've got five guys in the top. 20 or 6 guys in the top 20 what's well, only one guy so go. only one Russian can go so that's oh, so their Olympic their qualifying is just like an Olympic Games then. yeah their, their national championships is like a world championships wow so talk about the, the actual countries so, that dominate so Japan Russia Georgia Georgia right. Georgia and men's judo I don't I don't know their women's judo is not that strong Mongolia is very strong yep. France from all, the, all of Europe um, Cuba is very good in women's judo uh, Brazil is very good yeah, yeah nice. pretty much everyone. Everyone in the world's good, apart from New Zealand and Australia. Where <laughs> <laughs> hey, until next year, not bad. Man. we're not yeah, bad. That's we're not what you bad. represent. Until you got a lot of. You got a burden to carry. You know, yeah. Yeah. you get to be that. It's um, always it's always nice um, when you see an Australian or Kiwi athlete doing well internationally. Like yeah, there's a competition yeah. on the weekend in Tokyo, Tokyo Grand Slam. So it's a very big competition. Grand Slam is the same in the Grand Slam in tennis. There's four per year. They're yeah. very prestigious. And um, two Aussies, uh, Katarina Hacker and Nathan Katz, both got seventh places, which is very good. Awesome, man. Yeah. So given that you do qualify, are you going to go into some sort of training camp? Because I know I read something that you went to Uzbekistan. Is that yeah, correct? Uh, that was um, a f- 
International Judo Federation Scholarship, and I lived in Uzbekistan for four months for training. But yeah, um, with judo, when you say training camp, mm. it's it's not like um, you seclude yourself, sort of thing. Or it's just, it's just it's just training. It's like it, you say training camp, and like after some competitions, you have international training camps, or sometimes you know, and just national teams come and train together. Mm. There's a training camp in um, Sydney in January. Which is just all the best in Sydney will be. Just come to together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just train. But the thing is, um, I know like, I was talking to someone, um, a friend of mine, she plays table tennis and she had a month-long training camp. If you do a month-long training camp in Judah, you die. It's like, yeah, because yeah, well, we do every day, won't Yeah, we, we pretty much at a Judo training camp, you do two, two three-hour just fighting sessions. Just yeah. You fight for two, two hours, three hours, yeah, and you do it twice a day. Wow. Yeah, so... And also you're doing lifting weights, running, is that... Uh, yeah, as well? yeah, well, I do that. You don't do that during training camps. Training camps, you just do judo. Just wait till it's intense, man. Yeah. yeah. But um, normally my schedule involves gym and, uh, yeah, running, running as, well, as well. Running yeah. Like, uh, especially sprints and explosive stuff. What was it like to go to Uzbekistan? Like, obviously... It's an interesting place. Is uh, that, like, the like conditions? Like, did you... Were you camping? What were you doing? Like, Jeff? Uh, well, uh, we were living at the, um, the Olympic Training Centre for Judo. They got yeah. the Olympic Training Centre. And it was just... It's a very different place. Very third world. Mm. Um, I don't want to insult any Uzbeks here. Like, Uzbeks are lovely people. Like, mm. I've got a lot of good friends in Uzbekistan. Or at... Was, wasn't yeah, it yeah, Kazakhstan? Yeah, that's next door, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been to Kazakhstan too. What's that like? Kazakhstan's a little more rich than Uzbekistan, so you can okay. see all. Mountainous? Of... Is it all? Is it mountainous there? No, just flat. Man, I just have no flat. idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's literally, Borat. it's literally yeah. flat as man. It's like flat. I'm, I remember we were going to from Tashkent to Samarkand and by train in Uzbekistan. And it was just flat everywhere, just completely flat. And then you could see the Himalayas, the edge of the Himalayas. What was, like what was the, the food distance. like, man? Was it, were they feeding you some good food? Um, it's interesting. Like, I ate bull's testicles there. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was very tasty, yeah. I like bull's bulls. <laughs> yeah. There's a, what do they call them? There's a name. They serve them. Shashlu. Yeah, they, they serve them in America. What's the worst thing they've eaten? I, worst I thing I'm, that, I'm a little bit of a girl. I don't think I've so, done too much. I don't know if it's the worst, yeah. but the coolest thing I've ever eaten, we were, uh, my buddy Paul and Dean and I were... Um, fishing uh, 50 miles south of San Diego, so off the coast of Mexico, and we were fishing for uh, yellowfin, migrating back from Hawaii to Alaska, and we actually caught one. And I've never seen a more beautiful species in my life. It it was the most beautiful thing. How big? And If you're watching that big, I don't know how big that would be. A meter? My size. Yeah, so maybe (laughs) maybe like three feet. Yeah. And I didn't, I wasn't prepared because I'd never been deep sea fishing, but I wasn't prepared what a gaff was. So, like, my buddy Paul grabs a gaff, and a gaff is a hook, and yeah. we reel this fish in, and all of a sudden he pulls his hook out and hooks it, <laughs> and you could hear the life come out, <gasps> and I, I was kind of, like, taken back by it. Blood went everywhere. Anyway, we actually carved the heart out and ate you it ate the right there. Nice. Gnarly. Yeah, it was beautiful. But it, it, it was a cool experience. Yeah. I got tricked into eating lambs. No. A tongue. Have you eaten tongue before? I've had no. a tongue. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's prepared tricked. just like me. Tricked. It's very fatty, and it's yeah. very... It's actually delicious. I had, um, in this biggest time, one thing I did eat on pretty much a daily basis is ha- horse meat, which is quite interesting. Yeah. Horse yeah. meat? What was that like? More like it's a tough, beef? Right? Sort of? It's tough, it's tough. But yeah, you can feel it's a strong animal. Eh? Like mean, Very much like a kangaroo. Have you eaten kangaroo? Before? Yeah, I've eaten kangaroo. Yeah. I like kangaroo. Very yeah. lean protein. Never, yeah. I so can't masterly. Eat it. Like, my girlfriend has a farm up near Orange, and when I first moved here, we went up there to ride four wheelers, and there were kangaroo everywhere. Mm. And the, the animal itself is so different alien to what I'm used to yeah. from I guess maybe the Very visual huge. shock of me seeing one I couldn't eat it you know when a car hits one the car usually has more damage than the kangaroo the kick? Yeah. no it's just the just the way how muscly yeah, and just yeah. structured it is man it's just such a powerful beast yeah I have some photos on my uh, tablet actually of, they were, there's like a family of them and they're sitting on the hilltop and two of these guys are yeah, jacked they're jacked yeah, yeah. 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 they're always these two are they now? Are they herbivores or carnivores? Are they eating meat or they're, no, they're herbivores? Yeah. They're herbivores, but grass and stuff. They're just yeah. they're just territorial animals, and if you they're very if they sketchy. You, you're in trouble, you know. I bet they were you, very. You can't do judo on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet you can. He's not much. tapping out. Not yeah. eating that dog. Yeah, yeah. one hundred. Yeah, I've eaten uh, another weird one. 
This is a bit controversial. Here we go. This will get you a few hits and calls. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> what do we got? Uh, Earmuffs, mom. <laughs> I've been in uh, a bit of whale in Japan. Oh. oh. I, went, but I was 14 at the time and I wasn't aware of the issues quite yet. There you go. There you go. That's it's not my like excuse. You, it's not like you were poaching it. And, yeah. yeah. I remember once in New Zealand, like, I was at uni. I think mean, I just come from uni and. Come, come home from uni and just lay down, have a nap. And someone's knocking on the door, and I come out in a screen piece, and she, she says, like, oh, we're doing a promotion to save the whales. And I'm still half asleep, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've eaten whale. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's about a 15, 20-minute uh, conversation I want to have back. <laughs> Dude, did they t- they probably put you on some watch list. You're, she, you're... she looked at me like I was Mussolini. You know? Yeah, <laughs> they put you your pinpoint your address. I've eaten whale and it was delicious. <laughs> I didn't tell her what it tasted like. I didn't describe it too much, but yeah, it was a interesting experience. So oh, you don't man. tell Greenpeace you've eaten whale. No, definitely Japanese. I hope the competitors aren't listening and they're tuning in and. Might take it out of you. Dude, man. you've lived in Uzbekistan, you've eaten wow. whale. I've lived in Japan, yeah. Lived in Japan. Born in Croatia. Yep. Lived in Holland. Is it Kiwi, Kiwi. fighting for the Australian national team? No, oh my fight, god. Fight, fighting for New Zealand. Fighting for okay, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Competed in, Compete the, in Australia and won. Australian one. national champion. So yeah. you're you're technically an Australian national champion. Yeah. But you're not yeah. I'm not I didn't compete in New Zealand national championships, yeah. I was in Paris. See I just claim any athlete who wins because there's a Kyrie Irving for instance. They you, claim every Kiwi yeah. songwriter as well, yeah. man. <laughs> Russell, Russell Crowe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Russell Crowe is pretty Kiwi. He's Kiwi. Yeah. What a was he born? He in was Australia? born in, I think, uh, Melbourne. They tried to make him swap once. And they the said he, yeah. yeah, they said he was. Uh, people say he's Aussie. If you, like, I think Aussie claims she had to the band. You probably. Had, like, <laughs> the, the band, they like quite a few like big hits that come out. What's the band called? She had. It's a good band. Oh. They, when they went to America, they had to change their name from She Had to Pacifier because. Oh, I know Pacifier. Like, yeah, because they sound too much like Jihad. Yeah, that's a Kiwi band. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. That they had to change their name. Yeah, they changed because it, it smells sounds like Jihad. Yeah, and then um oh. when they then they said screw it and changed it back to Jihad a few years later. Wow, pacifier, Holy same shit. band. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, um, there you go. Some fun facts. Any other fun facts? <laughs> <laughs> Give us some Don't fun get me facts. Started. Don't get yeah, me started. we're all we're if full the, of them. If they come Beast, up during the conversation, if they come okay. up during the conversation, beer and bacon, up. ladies and gentlemen. Beers <laughs> and beer bacon. bacon. It's the newest punk band coming out of <laughs> New Zealand, Hamilton. Who influenced you on the beer and bacon, man? Your old man or? Um, I, I just. Like, I think I had my first beer when I was five. <laughs> Dad gave me a no, sip. Wow. No, no. Dad, Dad gave me a sip and I liked it. Yeah. I've liked it ever since. Wow. Yeah. The, police are just knocking, the, the police are knocking on your parents' door right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good, man. you got to start him young. Wow. you got to see that's adversity. He's, yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. going through <laughs> five years old. Let's poison my child and yeah. if he survives, he's going to be a tough boy. That's right. Yeah. There's actually a, like a theory written about that. The more like you expose young people, kids, to in terms of if you're using vaccinations as an example they say that yeah. later in life they won't you know be more yeah. susceptible to getting sick like mm-hmm. you're meant to get you meant to, to let get, you get to let your kids that immune system. yeah you're meant to let your kids get sick you shouldn't buy that soap that's 99% kills 99% of bacteria that's because, right because you want your kids to build up an immunity you know you yeah. want them you want them to go jump in mud and run around and roll in the grass and stuff. It's a little bit of bro science, but I believe it too. It's, it's like one yeah. of those things that you, it's, you just know. I it's think almost like nowadays... It, there is science behind it, I bet. Yeah, but yeah. nowadays kids are overprotected. Like, especially in New Zealand, Australia, like, just too PC in terms of, oh, what if they get hurt? What is the crime... That in, in New Zealand, uh, is like, people ask me all the time, do you like, do you like Australia? And one of my biggest reasons for saying yes is... I know I really don't have to worry about some of the, the cultural norms like I had to in Southern California or Northeast Ohio where I'm from about literally going to the ATM and worrying about maybe getting robbed and that's an issue, it's a real issue everywhere I go in, in, in the States. Um, I really don't feel that way in Sydney. What's it like in New Zealand? I've never no, it's, been there. It's, it's, I feel safe walking around. Yeah. I think most people feel pretty safe in New Zealand. It's a, 
did it change? I know we mentioned a little bit about what happened um, in 2011. Yeah, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, it's, all, just, it's all in the past. It's like okay. yeah. What was that like? Though, like in terms of overcoming that mentally? Um, it was hard. It was very. It was a hard time in my life. Like if you don't know what we're talking someone, about, talk I got yeah. I got um. I got head in the head. From, I got attacked from behind, head in the head with a baseball bat when I was walking to my girlfriend's, uh, walking to my girlfriend's at the time's car uh, after a night out with some mates. And um, yeah, I, was, I had a brain hemorrhage and a fractured skull and I was out of judo for about 14 months. But um, yeah, the biggest thing I learned is you just got to take small steps and stay positive. And... I lost a lot of my independence. I wasn't allowed to drive, you know, because I was because uh, if something happened to you me, you know, I, like that, if yeah. I black out, you know, I'm a danger to other people on the road. So you lose a lot of your independence. So you know, I had my parents driving me around, and you know, it's, and I think it's a, I think it, the reason why I find it really um, an amazing story, just that alone. I I knew a guy who was a high level boxer. And something like that happened to him when we were in our late teens, and it wasn't that. As your attack was really brutal, I think that's an attempted murder co charge in court. His was something a little, he got hit in the back of the head. He fell. Yeah. He was never the same fighter. He couldn't fight again because of his his mindset. He couldn't. So yeah. He lost his focus. For me, um, I just took my time off, and you know it was hard. And every day I, you know, tested if I do this and I get dizzy, I'd stop. You know, and mm -hmm. small steps all the way along. And I had a, one thing that really helped, I had a good girlfriend that was still good friends, like, I, the girl I was going out with at the time, she was really, you know, because I was, you know, I got down and a little bit depressed at times, and she kind of brought me out of that, she was very helpful. Um, How'd judo play in that? Was judo an anchor for you of getting back, or was it just one yeah, you normal? Yeah, it was kind of like... It was judo, I still did technical every day, I just mm -hmm. low impact stuff. Um, how long after the how long after the event? Uh, probably like three weeks. Oh my God. <laughs> did they how I'm, long, did I'm, I try I'm to? Too keen. I'm too yeah, keen. I can tell. Yeah. Too keen. That's gonna be the name did of you like, hide the that from your parents? judo gear. Huh? Did you have to hide that from your parents that you? Were uh, no, I just said I'm going to coach. And, and I, no, I didn't. I I just didn't fight. I just did technical. I just like practice technique, like really slow mo. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, you need a yeah. medical clearance to kind of come back? Like was that yeah, tough? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I pretty much just got a MRI and you know MRI scan and pretty much uh, yeah. sent it, went to the doctors after 14 months and they said they checked me out they said no we're happy and New Zealand Judo said okay we're happy yeah, yeah man but that would have kind of robbed you of an opportunity to go to 2012 in London yeah man. yeah kind of um, is this what kind of yeah. motivating you to get to the next one because it's kind of robbed your dreams a little bit well it robbed it robbed my dreams is you know. Who knows? Who knows what would have happened if um, I thought we we never know. So I don't I don't look back on it. Um, I don't look back on it and think, oh, you know, these guys took away my Olympic dream. I don't view it like that. I view it like, first of all, yeah, they're bad people. There's bad people everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. You know, and they're gonna do something else stupid and get caught. So I've made my peace with that. Calm as a bitch. It's yeah. Like, and um, in terms of, you know. Myself, you know, I did positive stuff every day and I tried to, you know, every day I tried to take steps forward. And I think um, I did a lot of technical work, so my judo became sharper in a way. So uh, I think I, I came out at the other end stronger, especially mentally and especially um, in, in terms of appreciating life. It's, uh, you kind of learn to uh, yeah. appreciate what you got. And you yeah, appreciate take it away from you at any stage. Yeah, you just yeah. Show. yeah, yeah. You, you know, you you've got to enjoy what you do, and you got to appreciate what you have. Your friends, you got to talk. It's to like them. it's pretty great, like yeah. being alive. You, know? you have a really yeah. good outlook on something. Yeah. That's I think that's the most that's the biggest trick in overcoming any type of adversity or tragedy is that is knowing that you, with a positive mindset, we yeah. are able to yeah, control yeah. the future. You can't control what happened, but yeah, the you steps, can't control the past, but. 
you can um, be the best person you can be for the future. I yeah, like that. Yeah. And um, who's like been the most influential? Influential? Do you have any mentors or anything like that? That's helped you. It's a big step. Like man, obviously, like I like a lot of famous athletes, yeah. like uh, John Alomu. He obviously yeah. passed away. Did you see yeah. the um, tribute that he's? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's quite. What yeah. happened was he's one of the best wingers that's ever played. Yeah, he passed away. And, what, um, yeah, yeah, in Auckland they had a. Um, beautiful at Eden Park. Yeah, it? yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so and Eric Rush's speech. All the players. Beautiful. He played for Auckland Blues and obviously the All Blacks as well. So, all, pretty Simmons, much what ninety five percent of his teammates that played with him were did a all big there. Hucker, yeah. They did a massive hucker. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, but he was. Yeah. yeah, he was a great athlete. So I remember always watching him and thinking, oh, it's awesome. And mm. you know, another one was actually Michael Jordan. We touched on him earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Great. So cool. Yeah. 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 Like uh, so, and Muhammad Ali, I really like. I, was, I like a lot of sports. So, yeah. um, in terms of judo, I had a, a few guys in New Zealand who I always looked up to. Um, when I was young, there was this guy called Ben Pilly. Um, he was always like, when I was like twelve, thirteen, he was mm. the best in New Zealand. He was all quality to watch. And I had a, another mate. He became one of my good friends. Um, he was probably three or four years older than me, um, Alistair Lee. He was really, like when I was young, he was, he was not, he was only a little bit older than me, but he was nearly qualified for Athens Olympics and he was like 18 and he was just a guy who I always looked up to. Unfortunately, it's really sad. It was a big thing for us. It was really sad he passed away a few years ago. And, but since then, I got to know his brother, who's also... He came, his brother came sick of at Commonwealth Games, which, you know, as a guy who's just lost his brother, yeah. to a few months later, to motivate yourself to keep training and, you know, going and then make the Commonwealth Games and then get, get a silver medal. It's amazing. And he dedicated a silver medal to his brother, which is, you know... So, yeah, there's a few guys who I really look up to in New Zealand judo who are personal heroes of mine. Yeah, man. And another one is, uh, I mean, I touched on him earlier, Sean Choi. He's, he was, yeah, like my training partner, and he was always so technically superb that I always looked up to him. Um, obviously, there's some famous judo guys, global judo guys. I always like Neil Adams. He's a British guy. He's probably the most successful British male judoka. And, um, yeah, there's... There's too many to me. Yeah. Nah. What's your favorite movie, man? My you, favorite movie? Yeah. Have you seen Vision Quest? Is this in your realm? Well, Vision Quest? Vision, 1980s Matthew Modine, the wrestling movie, they're cutting weight to win the state championship no. with uh, Shoot. No, oh, I haven't seen that. You gotta yeah, see it. Me. You gotta see it. I'll send you the link. Okay. Yeah, I know my buddies listening. They, they've definitely seen this. Have you heard of it? No. Matthew Modine, I think, was maybe 22. It came out in 87. And it's that typical American high school movie, but it's all based around wrestling. Wow. And the world, the champion of this little town, the champion of this town, and they're training to make weight, and the, obviously the kid from this school isn't as good as, I think his name was Shooter, or yeah. Shoot, the guy. Did he shoot a lot? He's carrying yeah. up ladders. There's a scene, he has like a ladder on his back running up the stadium stairs while like a Madonna song's playing. It's, you gotta check it out. Okay. Typical 80s. Yeah. Like, there's a love song in the background, there's a love interest. Cliff, cliffhanger for um, wrestling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cliffhanger. Yeah, right. <laughs> cliffhanger. It, it's a good one. It, it, um, it, yeah, it's my favorite movie. There's yeah. a lot. There's what would lot. you? Is there? Do you ever find inspiration in movies when you're? Talking? Um, you know what I like? It's a, it's a war movie. Um, Thin Red Line because I think it just shows teaches a lot about humanity. I really yeah. like that movie. Thin Red Line. I yeah, there, there are a lot of them, aren't there? Yeah, like, and then I like um, I like comic books as well. So I like Watchmen. Watchmen's up there as one of my favorite movies. I like Three Hundred because yeah. it's badass. It is so yeah, badass. Yeah. I love that scene where. She speaks right at the beginning, and she, and she says, "Only real men." Or, yeah, yeah. About yeah. women don't. Well, women are allowed to speak in Sparta because they they give birth to real men. Some yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's oh, awesome. that whole little scene is awesome. I like. Uh, I also like the Departed. I really Great. like the Departed. Departed. Yeah, fuck, I, see, it fucked with, it fucked me up though, man. All those twists at the end. Yeah. Who knew? Like, <laughs> well, it's still a still a cast. Like DiCaprio. Yeah. Di when DiCaprio got killed, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> yeah, for and, real? And like, what? Nicholson, DiCaprio, yeah. Damon, Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and then Ipper. Pacino was yeah. in it. And then um, Dustin Hoffman was in it. And then yeah, it kept twisting and yeah. twisting and twisting yeah. and twisting. Nah, it's um. It's one of my favorites. It's, I got. I'm a big movie buff. Okay, my who? All right, top five. Go. Don't think. 
Tough okay. ugly. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, Thin Red Line, Departed, Watchmen. I've got to say Blood Diamond as well. Awesome. Blood okay, Diamond. so the man loves drama. He loves drama and he loves it. He loves a story that ends well. Yeah. yeah, your story will end well. The best way it will end is with a gold medal Did you and see? a handheld. You've got to check out Creed, man. Creed was awesome. Oh, God. I'm so looking forward Creed is so there. good. I still haven't seen Straight Outta Compton. I'm looking, I, I haven't really seen that see either. It. I want to see that as well. I lived there. I didn't. I lived about six miles from Compton for seven years. Long yeah. Beach, California. So, like, in not during that time, but just in my yeah. mid-20s. It's an, yeah, it's a different. I haven't seen it either, but I really want to see that. That looks brilliant. Mm. I watched The Martian recently. That was really good. Another typical American movie. Uh, what's, right? your, what's your favorite? Five. My favorite movie. Five. Without thinking, Forrest Gump, Shawshank Redemption, Stand by Me, um, Good Will Hunting, and probably The Program. All feel good movies. Yeah, yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Good Will Hunting. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen King wrote what, Shawshank. Little what did we What did we talk about the other day about how Americans? Like, um, it's all about bringing yourself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we were talking yeah, yes. about motivational speakers. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And you said that somebody had told you, or you had heard that the reason you'd given a good explanation. Right, the, the comedy thing, right? Yeah, it was yeah. a comic. That, like, uh, 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 it was Stephen Fry, actually. Stephen Fry, who's um, a British comedian, and um, I think he's a gay rights activist and a comedian. And he, he's got a few panel shows that he hosts. And he said, like, I was watching, it's on YouTube. Um, I think it just... Stephen Fry on American versus British yeah. comedy, and he's talking about how because you know America, the American culture is like it's all about bringing yourself up, getting over ad- adversity, mm. and then like the comedians they just they just crack one liners and stuff. Whereas British comedians, you know, are happy to hassle themselves. They make fun of themselves, which American comedians don't. And um, he brought up a good analogy he said like an animal house there's some guy at the party that's playing terrible guitar so the so the main like heroic guy breaks the guitar and everyone laughs you know and he say oh if this is a British comedy the comedy hero would be got the guy who got his guitar broken because yeah, and it's just yeah, like it's a good analogy. Yeah, and I think a little bit of a generalization. Yeah, no, 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 I like no. it. I like. I like. I, but like, yeah, like you know, it t- makes Tony sense. Robbins is the most su- he's more successful in America than he is in the rest of the world. I'd say. When, when you say, I the, the fascinating thing about him is I really didn't even start listening or dabbling in him until I moved to Australia. Yeah. Interesting. I just you kinda have to be ready for that type of person in in terms of where you are in your life. If you're a person I just, that, I just like him in shallow hell. <laughs> yeah, was he yeah, he's, he's a scary looking he's dude. He's, big yeah. man. he's a he's, scary he's he got six foot four, isn't he? I would he's say huge. bigger than that. I was really? I was thinking more like like towards like being a giant like Jack six Black nine. is like up to his shoulder or something. Yeah, Jack Black's a little yeah. dude. Well, anyway, Jack Black, not your leave raise one. <laughs> they don't like you. Yeah, they don't like you, Nacho. <laughs> Jack Black, shit. Uh, so you can help us out with actually with our questions and answers, actually, man. So every episode we've got uh, everyone sends in emails wanting to get yep. some answers um, helped out with. So we've got Varun from Sydney. He's asking, boys, how do I stay in shape when I'm on holidays? Uh, well, uh, Varun from Sydney, I'd say when you're on holidays, you you can still watch what you eat, right? And you can, even if you're on holiday, you can go for a little jog on the beach in the morning, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think like it's, about, I, it's about balance. Like, obviously, yeah. when, when we're away, we're all going to have a few drinks. We're all going to eat out and go to nice yeah. restaurants. But in the morning, there's plenty of time. You can go for a walk. Yeah. When you yeah. go and sightsee, you can walk instead of taking the buses. Yeah, yeah. Lots of yeah, it's an awareness. There. Also, it's it's... Varun, empower yourself in learning body weight movements. You could always find space. Yeah. I know when I'm traveling in a hotel room, I'm going to get some push ups in, some planks, um, yeah. some leg raises, things like that. Easy. Yeah, yeah. very easy. Um, get the heart rate up a little bit. What you touched on, I quite like. Um, I always find that, you know, if I'm in a new city and I go have a look at um, the sites, I, I end up walking a lot. Yeah, man, I, I end up so like yeah. walking all day and, you know, you know by the end of it, I think I lost about two thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, just just places like Par- last time I was in Paris last year. Yeah, you just, you walk. just walk and walk and walk yeah. and walk and walk. It's like ten hours later. Yeah, Champs Elysees. You can walk to the Eiffel Tower yeah. and you just kind of have a mat on you. Walk around. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. an important. One. I guess I guess the important just be aware that yeah. um, have fun, but be aware. Yeah, use your time properly. That's yeah, it. exactly. 
I had, um, actually, I, went, I was in Prague, and I think I did about a 10-hour walk around Prague. <laughs> Where were you going in Prague? <laughs> uh, Sounds so. like he was looking for something. <laughs> we in Pro- when, well, last time I went to Prague, I went to this nightclub, and it was five stories. Did you go there? Uh, no, I was there for, like, judo, so I, I did go to one nightclub that was only a short visit. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll. Uh, awesome, man. Um, that's actually, we only got one question for today. Where's the question? So, guys, if you ever want a question answered by any of our special guests or me or Johnny, just send us a quick email. Either send Johnny one at johnny at therealfitcoach.com or me at tristan at tristancanellfitness.com. We can answer any questions you've got, like Varun just had on his holidays. We can answer sports questions, health, nutrition, movies. Whatever. Judo. Yeah, we we're, have we're couple, getting back. We're getting yeah, back. We're faceted. We have you know, finance. Fitness, psychology, <laughs> whatever you want. Hell yeah. Nothing extra to that. You never know, you uh, never know. What else we got, guys? Well, we touched on movies, didn't we? So, yeah. any other interest you've got? What do you do for actual... Do you have to, you have to work as uh, well? That's a good question. Like, I teach judo um, quite a lot. Mm. And uh, right now... I'm pretty much just training all the time. That's awesome. Uh, I did work in an office for a few months this year. Yep. And yeah, it was all right. <laughs> Good man. So in a perfect world, if we have, the, if you have the power, a year from today, what, what's the what's the credentials if you were doing a podcast? How are you getting introduced? What's before? Uh, that? Olympian. That is <laughs> that, what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, Olympian. man. That's the. Find that's that the belt. Goal. Find that medal and put it somewhere. You said you had something that you get to visualize every day. I think that's really important to see something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I quite. Yeah, I, I'm gonna print something off. I want to print off like, like the Olympic sign or something. So I've got a, you see. If you look at my phone, I've got a whole bunch of like, like advice that I've written for myself. So when every time I look at it, I kind of see it. Yeah, yeah, man. Now, Vitsa, um, where can the people actually find you? Because I, I want to follow you. I want to see your progress on okay, well, the um, Olympics. I've got if it's a paid lineage NZ Judo Athlete as a Facebook page. So if you just search up my name, it's I V I C A P A V L I N I C NZ Judo Athlete, and that's on Facebook. And my Insta is just my name. If it's a paid lineage, just no gaps, nothing simple as ah. Uh, yeah, um, I'll try. Uh, I, the more I train, the more active I am on Insta and Facebook. Yeah. Awesome, man. And the more, what are you fighting again? The more, uh, my next competition is on the 16th of January in Tunisia. In Tunisia? Yeah. Tunisia, you hear that? Wow. 16th. And can we fi- now, is there anything that we could ch- like stream live? Uh, there- yeah, this, um, tell us about most, um, most judo competitions, they happen nearly every weekend. They're all over the world. I think the next one's actually the one in Tunisia. And... You just go on ipon.tv and you can watch live judo pretty much every weekend. How do you spell it? I P P O N dot TV. Okay. No yeah. well, I'll put that all in the show notes, guys, so then you can obviously follow his progress. I'm pretty interested to watch 100%. him. 100%. Yeah, fight, man. Yeah. So. Uh, extra pressure, guys. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah you got adversity. You, you yeah, got this. Man. You got this easy. But if, I, if I end up getting cheerleaders from this, I'll be very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some beer shout and bacon. Out, <laughs> shout beer out to the bacon cheer- buddies. Shout yeah, out to the cheerleaders. Beer, yeah, yeah. beer <laughs> and bacon buddies. I like that. Hell yeah, guys. But uh, as we've been going the first couple episodes, Project Move still got uh, Hills for Hope coming up. So... If you want to donate any shoes for the homeless, please get in touch with us. A uh, big shout out to our sponsors again. We've got Jack Rabbit, Rabbit Slim's Barbershop in Potts Point and also the Organic Trainer. Yeah, so check out Organic Trainer out, www.theorganictrainer.com. When you're checking out with your products, whether you get the exercise tea or the sleep tea, type in the Fit Coach in the code section to get 10% off all orders. And if you're in the Sydney Potts Point area and you need a nice haircut, skin fade, he does beards, trimmings, check Dre out at Jack Rabbit Slim's Barbershop. Awesome. And coming up, guys, we've got a host of guests. We've got some strength and conditioning guys. We've got some dietitian guys, as well as a couple of fighters maybe coming on as well. So stay tuned. Some big names coming on. But uh, Vitz, thanks so much for coming on, man. We wish you the best of luck for yeah. the Thanks for having year. me, guys. And we want to see you again, man. So. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries, man. You're a beast. We're cheering for you. fun talk. Fun yeah. talk. Cool. Awesome. Can I, uh, you want to do a shout-out? Yeah, yeah. 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 Shout-out to my uh, main protein sponsor, MF Nutrition. Just uh, go to mfnutrition.com.au, I think, and check out what they got. Awesome. Do they have an Insta? 
Uh, yeah, they've got EMF Nutrition. Just look that up, EMF Nutrition. Awesome, MF Nutrition. Sweet, yeah. guys. We'll check you out soon, but uh, remember, check out iTunes. Leave us a, a rating. A five-star rating would be awesome just to help us out in the search rate rankings. But, um, Johnny, we've got some exciting ones coming up. Yeah, with uh, our next show. Yeah, we're we talking yeah. about what we're filming. Yeah, so we're, yeah, so we're doing a, um, a live podcast from Bali. Yeah, man. Yeah, so I'm, I'm leaving there in a couple it. days. We're just gonna focus on some topics about the importance of travel and just being vulnerable and what it's uh, meant to both of us. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Never been there. Looking forward to see some of the ruins and to get to know a new country. Cool. We'll talk to you soon, guys. Peace. Awesome. Peace. Bye. The Vision Board Podcast, hosted by Johnny Stofko and Tristan Cannell.